and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be what? Uh huh. They should understand. For a while you will not see me. He told them already that those elders and those religious people they will kill him. But then he said, and be raised again the third day. Isn't that clear enough? And then when I'm raised again, you will see me. For a while you will not see me. For a while you will see me. We're looking at Matthew chapter 26. In Matthew chapter 26, I'm looking at verse 31. 26, 31. Then says Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Very clear. He will die. After death is burial. That's why I said for a while you will not see me dead, buried, hidden away from you. And the people of the world will think it's finished. But don't worry about that. Don't listen to them. It's only for a little while. Only for a little while. And that little while when I'm away and you don't see me. Just know a while again you will see me. And don't look at the period where you will not see me. Be expectant of the period that you will see me. What you look at will determine how you feel, your emotion, your fear, or your faith, your expectation, your joy, or your sorrow. And say, so he said, look at what will bring joy to your life. Not what will bring sorrow. If you're thinking about the loss, you're going to have sorrow. If you think about the gain, you're going to have joy. If you think about the absence of Christ, you're going to have sorrow. If you think about the presence of Christ, for a while, you will see me again. And then you will rejoice. And your joy no man shall take away from you. That's what gives us joy. You know, in life, the direction you're looking will determine how you feel. The things you're looking at will determine how you the things you are thinking of will determine how you feel. And you know, we need to help ourselves understand that that's sometimes why some people give up, they give up hope, they give up life, they give up the excitement of life, and they give up all the determination and the consecration they had before. And when things like that happen to you, my brother, when things like that happen to you, my sister, look in the right direction and look at what he said. He said, for a while you will not see me. But that is not the end of the statement. That is not the end of the sentence. That is not the end of the event. The end of it is, for a while again, you will see me. You will see him. And then you will rejoice in Jesus' name. So he tells us then, but start with you. But after, after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. John chapter 7. We're looking at John chapter 7. And we're looking at verse 33. John chapter 7. We're looking at it from verse 33. When we're pursuing the fact, and we're pursuing that statement of Jesus Christ. For a while you will not see me, and then later for a while you will see me. John 7, 33. In, in verse 33, then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, then I go unto him that sent me. Uh, you know, when people are not paying attention, we say it over and over and over again. And then when we're saying it for the seventh time, it's like they're hearing it for the first time. All of a sudden they wake up. And instead of waking up to reality, instead of waking up to the eternal plan of God, knowing this is a mistake from all eternity, instead of waking up to reality, then they wake up to human feeling, human consideration, and then they begin to be sorrowful, unnecessary. But such a thread then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. And you shall seek me, and you shall not find me. Obviously, it was telling them, if they brought together everything he told them before, it's not that you'll be in Jerusalem, I'll be in Galilee, you'll be in Jerusalem, I'll go to Bethlehem, you'll be in Nazareth, I'll go to Capernaum. No, it's, it means that he will not be in this world. That is, he will go to a place where they cannot touch him, where they cannot reach him, 
when they cannot go to him. That's what he was saying. And it shall be clear to them when he said, A while and ye shall not see me. And then a while and ye shall see me. If they had been paying attention to everything that Jesus said, there would be no confusion. You know, sometimes it happens in the church like that. That's you know, we've been telling you that this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And we've said it once and twice and three times. When we say it for the seventh time, all of a sudden it clicks and it dawns on you. And you say, why are we just thinking like that now? We're not just thinking about that now. We've been saying it before you didn't get the point. And we're saying it again. That we'll see Jesus. And Jesus, although he's gone, is coming back again. And when he comes back again, our hearts will rejoice in Jesus' name. We're saying more than that. We're saying whatever you have lost, you have not lost it forever, it will come back to you. If you're thinking about the loss, you'll be sorrowful. But if you understand, don't worry about that. Jesus said, just for a while you will not see. And then that's a loss. But the Lord is saying, don't worry about that. That thing that you have lost, it will come back. And when it comes back, it will come back in resurrection form. It will not be like the old that you saw. It will not be like the one that, you know, was tired, was sleeping in the boat, and then was weary, and was waiting by the well, and then will say, give me water to drink. When he comes, when you lock the door, he will just open, he will just enter. And when he comes, eventually, before when he's going, he'll just go up like this, he'll be looking at him. He says, I told you I'll come back, but it's in another form, in a resurrection form. It will come back to you in Jesus' name. You have lost a job, the job will come back in a better form. You have lost somebody, that somebody will come back in a better form. Give me a good, good amen. That's what the Lord was telling them. Verse 34. And ye shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will ye go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, see that ye cannot come. We're looking at John chapter 13. John 13, he told them over and over again. And he should have been paying attention. And the Lord is saying, Wipe away your tears, take away your sorrow. Let joy and gladness come back to your mind. Wake up. The Lord is telling you something you didn't get it before. He's saying to you again now, you will get that thing back again. In chapter 13, verse 33, little children, yet a little while I am with you. I'm wondering as I, as I read this over and over in the Bible, a little while, a little while, why is it they became confused? Why is it they became so sorrowful? When he had told them over and over, in that verse 33, little children, yet a little while, I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, we're looking at verse 36. In verse 36, there it says, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now. Very clear. Peter said, Lord, where are you going? Are you going on an evangelistic trip? You're going for preaching? You're going to another city? You're going to show the Gentiles? Where are you going that we cannot follow? And Jesus said, Whither I go, whither I go thou canst not follow now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. The Lord was very clear. They were the people that complicated the matter for themselves. In chapter 14, John, chapter 14, verse 19, yet a little while. He used that phrase many, many times. He told them, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. Verse 28, in verse 28, ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. Very clear. I go away. That's talking about his crucifixion and death. Talking about his burial. 
talking about his departure from the earth and talking about his final sacrifice he was going to make for the salvation of the whole of humanity and that shall have brought joy to them if they thought about the thousands of souls and the millions of souls and the billions of souls and the many generations that were going to get saved if they thought about the establishment of the kingdom of God and they thought about the expansion of the kingdom of God if they thought about the exaltation of Christ when all knees shall bow and all tongues shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord as a result of the sacrifice that he was going to pay the price of our redemption and salvation of Calvary. If they thought about that, it should have brought joy to them. But because they were thinking about the physical thing and the physical laws, and they were not thinking about the spiritual thing, the resurrection that will come, the redemption that will come, the righteousness that will come, and the reigning with Christ that will come. Because they were not thinking about that, that's why they made themselves sorrowful, unnecessary. Verse 28, you have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Verse 29, and now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Lord, I believe. I said, Lord, I believe. We should believe the Lord that good things will happen to you again in Jesus' name. We're looking at chapter 16, verse 5. Chapter 16, verse 5. But now, I go my way to him that sent me. That's very clear. The father sent him. He had said that many times. And the father is not on earth. He told them to pray, our father, which art where? In heaven. And when he told them, but now I go my way to him that sent me, they should have understood he was going to the Father, he was going to die. And then it says, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your hearts. They made themselves sorrowful unnecessary because they were not willing to get the point that he was making unto them. We're looking at Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 31. Luke chapter 18 verse 31. Then he took unto him the toil and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. Brothers and sisters, would you look up a moment? Jesus said, all things written concerning him, the Son of Man. Everything without one judge, one teacher removed. Everything will be accomplished. And we are following after Christ. That's why we're Christians. We're children of God. And God wants to make us just like Him. So that He can make us conformable unto Christ. What do we learn from that then? This is what we learn. That here we are in the world. Here we are in the kingdom. Here we are in the fold. And whatever happened to Christ, we're getting a picture of that in our lives. Every good thing that is written concerning you will be fulfilled. Yeah. Because Jesus told his disciples, he said, everything, all things written concerning him, all those promises, all those prophecies, and even the death on Calvary, and even the burial as Jonah was in the heart of the, or in the belly of the earth for three days. Nights and three days, even so must the Son of Man be. He'll die, and he'll be hidden away from you for three days. But on the third day, he will rise again. And he said, that has been written. It's going to be fulfilled. Why then, if it had been written 700 years by Isaiah, more than a thousand years by David, and more than 4,000 years by Moses. If that had been written all along, and we have read it and read it and read it, why is it when it comes to pass, why are we sorrowful? 
And why are we dejected? Why are we discouraged? Why are we sinking? And why are we acting as if the whole world is falling upon me? How will I do this? How will I do this? How will I accomplish that? How will I search all that? Go back to God and say, God, I'm waiting for the next level. I'm waiting for the next thing to come. I'm expecting. And I told you before, expectation will bring manifestation. It is coming. I said it is coming. And when it comes to you, I rejoice with you. Amen. You'll come and tell me your story. Amen. You say, Pastor, you said so. I was sorrowful. I thought it will never come back again. But thank God, it's come back in resurrection form. And then I am going to rejoice you and celebrate with you. Amen. Because this pronouncement I make on your life will be fulfilled. Amen. And the prophecy of the Lord concerning your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And that's what Jesus told them. Look at that in verse 32. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spitted on. And they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day, what will happen? He shall rise again. But look at verse 44. And they understood none of these things. Why didn't they understand? Something blocked their minds. They were not willing to hear. And because they were not willing to hear, that's why they didn't understand. But if you just open your heart and open your mind and say, Lord, grant me understanding, you'll have understanding in Jesus' name. And they understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. Point number two, the promise of answered prayer by the Savior. We're back to, we're back to John chapter 16. John, we're looking at chapter 16. I'm reading to verse 18 now. They said, therefore, what is this that is said a little while? We cannot tell what is said. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while and ye shall not see me and again a little while and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice only for a short time. I said only for a short time. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Anytime you have sorrow, just remind yourself that just for a short time, this sorrow shall be turned into joy. I thought you would say Amen. amen. You know, sometimes, church, you are familiar with me just talking, 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 and then you keep quiet for one hour and a half hours. And then when the time comes, now that you know, there's a little revival, uh, and then I say, don't be like.